We had pulled off to the side of the road next to the Grand Canyon Caverns. There were two men parked in a black car right where we were ready to pull off. My name is John Rhodes. I've been confronted by the men in black. We met John Rhodes in a previous investigation when we were looking for an underground alien base in Dulce, New Mexico. In 1996, when he went looking for an underground base near the Grand Canyon Caverns in Arizona, he must have gotten too close to something important because a couple of bizarre characters crossed his path. I was coming here from Las Vegas to investigate the Grand Canyon Caverns. Uh, we're pulling into this uh, pull-off outside a road. Here is a nice, shiny, new black car and two guys there in suits waiting for me. One was leaning against the car. The other one proceeded to walk up directly to me as I was parking. I got out of the car. The gentleman came over to my vehicle, and eye to eye, he turned around. And he said, Mr. Rhodes. And of course, I don't know him, but obviously he knew me. So these guys knew your name? Yes. Wow. They knew my name. More importantly, they knew I was going to be right there. I find it odd that in the middle of nowhere, two men suddenly appear and know John Rhodes' name. I don't think this was a random meeting. He turned to me and he said, well, you know, Mr. Rhodes, you can fall down out there and get hurt. You could fall down in some hole out there and nobody would ever find you again. And I knew this was a threat. And then what happened? They got back in their vehicle and I didn't even see them leave because I didn't want them to think that they had intimidated me. Did they have any kind of identification, either on their jacket or in their wallet? Nothing. As a matter of fact, when I looked at their vehicle, it just didn't have any dirt on it. It's not like somebody else drove by and some of the dirt kicked up from the road and covered their car. Their uh, shoes were absolutely shiny. You could see a reflection off them, black. Uh, it didn't look like they had been there at all, as a matter of fact. It looked like they just stepped out of their car for the first time. A brand new car, brand new clothing, brand new shoes, everything, right down to the teeth. It strikes me as more than odd that in the middle of the desert, they had no dust on their car, no dust on their clothing. How do you explain that? You can't. Why would they warn you about this area? What were you looking for? What's here? You have to remember that only 3.3% of the entire Grand Canyon has ever been surveyed, which means that 96% of that, almost 1,900 square miles out there, have never had human feet set down in it. I think some of these ancient cavern systems that in this limestone for hundreds of square miles is perfect territory to build underground military installations. You don't have to take any dirt out. You just occupy an already hollowed out space. And if they're connected through cavern passages or natural tunnels, it would be perfect to be actually in this limestone area. So the geology of the Grand Canyon Caverns area is conducive to underground caverns, underground tunnels, and John Rhodes thinks a network of underground bases, perhaps connecting the Grand Canyon with Dulce and Area 51, all of which are reported hubs of reverse engineering and alien technology. This is incredible. If Rhodes' theory is correct, that there are tunnels connecting all these underground alien bases, could this be why men in black are showing themselves? Am I intimidated? I would say that I would be more intimidated for you. proceeded to walk up directly to me as I was parking. I got out of the car, the gentleman came over to my vehicle, and eye to eye, he turned around, he said, Mr. Rose. And of course, I don't know him, but obviously he knew me. So these guys knew your name? Yes. Wow. They knew my name. More importantly, they knew I was gonna be right there. turned to me and he said, well, you know, Mr. Rhodes, you can fall down out there and get hurt. You could fall down at some hole out there and nobody would ever find you. And I knew this was a threat. Then what happened? They got back in their vehicle and I didn't even see them leave because I didn't want them to think that they had intimidated me. 